This is news now reaching you live from my brand TV news studio in Lagos, Nigeria. Coming up. Association of Local Governments of Nigeria or your state chapters or the Nigeria Immigration Service to vacate their various offices in the state within 24 hours. Pandemonium ensued at River State University, Port Hackett, after a student was shot there earlier today. Federal government targets 2 billion naira yearly from the establishment of integrated farm estate in Ogun State. Toyota to slash worldwide vehicle production by 40% in September. Glad to have you join us on News Now and hear some stories making headlines at this hour. My name is Margaret Tapara. The President Mamad Bouhari is currently presiding over a crucial security meeting with all nation security chief and relevant cabinet ministers in attendance. The meeting was summoned to critically analyze the prevailing challenges of security federally in the country with a view to charting the best way forward. The nation security forces had in the recent times taken the battle more robustly to insurgents, bandits and all other criminals troubling the country. The meeting is expected to discuss successes being achieved in the renewed onslaught against terrorism, insurgency as well as the deadly activities on bandits across the country. In attendance at Thursday's meeting are Vice President Yemil Shibajo, Chief of Staff to the President, Secretary to the Government of Federation, Minister of Defence, Justice Interior, Police and Foreign Affairs as well as National Security Advisor, among others. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, says the fact that insurgents are surrendering shows that Nigeria is winning the war against them. The minister said this in a recent interview with BBC's Focus on Africa. Back in his claim, Lai Mohammed said the evidence of that is the number of insurgents that are now surrendering and are not only surrendering their weapons, but are also coming with their relations and their families. End of quote. The minister states that the Nigerian having challenges in one corner of the country doesn't qualify it as a failed state. He emphasized, in quote, a failed state is not a state where you have challenges only in one corner of the country. A failed state is a state where you have general paralysis everywhere. End of quote. Now moving further, under state governor Rutumia Karadalu, SAN has sworn in Justice Williams Akin Toroye as the acting chief judge of the state with a charge to leave up to dictates of his calling. Justice Akin Toroye's appointment follows the retirement of the former Chief Judge Justice Olutoyin Akeredolu after attaining statutory retirement age of 65 years. And at the ceremony, Governor Akeredolu emphasized that he is not ready to seek any favor from any judge, adding that much is suspected of judicial officers by virtue of the eminent positions they occupy. of the state has paid nothing else short of quintessential conduct from you we are nothing we expect nothing else from you and I believe you will live up to standard because you say as you all know to stand as the bulwark of support for the downtrodden it should represent hope for all and sundry, both the rich and the poor, the high and the low. The other two arms of government, the executive and the legislative arms, the judiciary under my watch will form a synergy with two. All those things was for grace. The sun must keep shining bright and bright on the daily basis. We can only achieve this when there is camaraderie or amity between the three eyes. Now in other news, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and the LEA and Saudi Arabia's General Directorate of Narcotics Control, GDNC, have agreed to strengthen their partnership in the fight against trafficking of illicit drugs between the two countries. This is according to a communique issued on Wednesday by NDLEA's Director of Media and Advocacy, Bab Femi Babafemi. 
According to the statement, this partnership was the high point of discussions between the chairman, chief executive of NDLEA, Brigadier General Mohamed Buba Maba, retired, and the representative of GDNC, Colonel Hassel Hajid Al Otaibi, in Abuja on Monday and Tuesday. The GDNC representative invited General Mawa to visit the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia so as to deepen discussions on various aspects of collaboration between the NDLA and the GDNC. The NDLA chairman also accepted the invitation with the hope that it will provide opportunity to sign the MOU on the partnership between the two anti-narcotic agencies. Now, the Association of Local Governments of Nigeria, or Yosti Chapter, has issued a 24-hour ultimatum to Nigerian Recreation Service to vacate their various offices in all the 33 local government area of Oyo State. The association stated this on Thursday while briefing journalists in Ibadan, not local government secretariat Agodi Ibadan. It was gathered that trouble started when some youth who were protesting against the killing of a teenager in Ibadan stormed the area. The council boss and some of his close aides were said to have allegedly harassed by the immigration officers who were at the area when the youth were protesting. Speaking on behalf of the association, Oyo Algon chairman Sikrudu Sanders said the group condemned in the entirety the assault, molestation and harassment of Ibadan North local government chairman. He urged the Comptroller General of Immigration to produce the officials who perpetrated the Daslati Act within 24 hours. Now, the Oyo State Command of the Western Security Network, Amotekun, has denied any involvement in the killing of a 16 year old boy that was shot in Ibadan. Speaking with newsmen, the commandant of the Oyo State Amotekun Corps, Olainga Olayan, noted that the allegation was an attempt to discredit the efforts of the security outfit in combating crimes in the state. If there's any evidence, if there's any evidence implicating any of my operatives, I assure you, we will not spare them. It, before now, once there's anything, they know because we don't conduct, we don't condone, we don't condone in discipline. If you say I'm talking of uh, kill someone, there should be evidence. This is era of media. We are ordinary or with ordinary phone, you can record some incidences. You can record, even if the picture will not be clear, at least you will see an evidence that okay, this is a Montaco vehicle. Heavy security presence greeted the day two of the lawsuits by the Yoruba agitation Sunday Iboho against AGF and the assets about the damage done to its residents in Ibadan. Attempts by the council through the first respondent Abdullahi Abubakar to file a new application met a serious objection by the lead council to claimant Yomi Aliyu SN and after listening to both counsels, the judge called for 20 minutes recess for him to pronounce on the application. On resumption, the judge allowed the application to be filed and rewarded fine of 50,000 naira against the first respondent. We vehemently opposed the application, but at the end of the day, the court in the interest of justice granted the application and awarded 50,000 naira cost against them. That's what transpired in court. Now, despite the federal government's efforts in curbing fraudulent acts in the country, some persons still complain of increase in acts of the fraud in them through online trading system. Some residents of Patakas claim to have been defrauded by a Patakas based forex trading company protested with the Economic and Financial Crime Commission Office in Patakas, demanding for the prosecution of CEO Samuel Nkonkwo. The victims who carried black card of different descriptions to the EFC office wanted the financial crime agency to arrest the owner of the Ponce scheme in order to return their capital they invested. I invested two million. Because he came, the first time that they came, they say is a forest rate. That uh, when you invest at the, at the end of the month, that we give you 20% of, of the amount you invested. I invested 1.6. I'm feeling so bad about my money because I know how I work. So we are here to beg the EFCC people to help us to regain our money back. Because, because of that money, I'm supposed to do my wedding. Since because of that money, I cannot continue with the, the, the wedding any, anymore. So I'm very, very bad. I'm feeling very, very, very bad about my money. What we want from you is, is, is we want 
justice. We want our money back. So many women have died out of frustration. So many people, are, people cannot be able to pay their school fees. Some people invested more than 10 million, some 5 million, some 50 million, some 100 million. And inside the FC office, we met the zona head who received our petition and uh, gave us full assurance that they are going to make sure that they sit to the end of uh, this matter. Uh, on our part of civil society, I want to assure the general public that we are going to make sure we fish out all Ponzi scheme in River State. We are going to make sure that we fish out uh, this criminal who have committed uh, this offense and make sure that the law catches up with him. We want to use this medium to advise Nigerians uh, to be wary of uh, magic banks and uh, Ponzi investments. Floyd has killed five people in the Pokiskam town of Yoba State. The heavy rainfall destroyed several houses and dislodged hundreds of residents who are now taking refuge at Kwata and Avikeme primary schools within Pokiskam local government area. According to witnesses, the rain washed away houses and rendered most of the occupants roofless and had to be resettled in a temporary camp. Adamo also stated that the victims of the flood across the various communities lost foodstuff and all valuables to the water disaster. And meanwhile, the state government through the State Emergency Management Agency distributed food and non-food items to the displaced people while also providing canopies for the erection of temporal shelters at their place of abode. We were there was tension at Weaver State University, Port Harcourt, on Thursday after a student was shot dead at a cafeteria. It was learned that the group of suspected cultists had trailed the victim to a cafeteria near the Faculty of Management Science at about 9.20 a.m. where one of the assassins brought out a gun and shot the unidentified student in the head. An eyewitness said he died on the spot and the situation caused serious panic. When contacted, the public relations officer of the university, Harcourt White, confirmed the incident. He said that the perpetrators have been arrested and the police is investigating, he said. We'll take a short break now. We'll be right back. You go enter the market, just make you go buy fresh palm fruits. When you reach house, you go wash, you go pound, your body gonna pay you, even your fingernails gonna pay you. But make gonna no worry, make gonna relax. I get good news for now. On I don't hear banga fresh palm fruit extracts, all you need to do now make you go for the up, open up. Take the amount where you want, put that for your pot. Which soup will you want to make? She na wussy. She na bono. She na vegetable. She na banga. Ah uh ah. -uh. My sister no waste time again. My brother no waste time again. Just go buy banga fresh pan fruit extract. The woman will say, you sabi cook and you be butter cook. Banga. Yeah. I make your food in yum yum. Distributors needed nationwide. Phone number 081 63 97 447. 080-35-64-4436-070-66-63-8213 You welcome back and now business news. Thank you, Margaret. Welcome to Business News. I am Frank Omalapé, and here are some of the reports we're filing now. Minister of Aviation Hadi Serika says inefficient use of Nigeria's international airports and their low operating capacity informed the government decision to concession them for optimal result. His explanation came a few days after a recent virtual stakeholders meeting where he noted that uh, international airports in Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt, and Kano were not designed for international operation, assuring that prospective private handlers of the terminal uh, facilities will inject funds needed to improve the airport's infrastructure. Serika also said that the federal government remained committed to upgrading the airport in the country and making them viable through concessions. And now the International Air Transport Association, IATA, has claimed 143.8 million US dollars in airline revenues, which are blocked by the Nigerian government. It added that nearly 1 billion US dollars in airline revenues are blocked by governments across the globe. This was disclosed by the organization via a statement issued on Thursday. 
The association, however, urged government to abide by international agreement and treaty obligations to enable airlines to repatriate nearly 1 billion US dollars in blocked funds from the sale of tickets, cargo space, and other activities. The federal government is targeting 2 billion naira yearly from the establishment of integrated farm estate in Ogu State, even as it plans to engage over 1,500 youth on the farm. The executive secretary of the agency, Paul Ikone, during an inspection of the sign said due to its proximity to the commercial city of Lagos, Ogun State has been earmarked to host the largest farm in the country. He said the plan is to complete and commission the estate by February 2022. The farm estate should be established by the National Agricultural Land Development Authority on uh, a thousand or hundred hectares of land in Makwan Bafemi Wode local government area of the state. He's targeted at having the largest fish, goat, and snail farm in the whole of southwest Nigeria. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation has announced its intervention in the perennial electric power supply challenge in Maiduguri Borono State. Speaking at the contract signing event, which held virtually, the group managing director of the NNPC, Melikiar, is playing that the corporation, through its subsidiary, NNPC, gas and power investment company, decided to intervene in the Maiduguri power situation by undertaking the project, which would be fired with liquefied natural gas and run commercially. Kiari noted the project, which is an integral part of ongoing efforts to deepen the corporation's domestic gas utilization plan for the nation's social economic growth, has China Machinery Engineering Company as the EPC contractor, while General Electric is the equipment manufacturer. And now the Security and Exchange Commission, SEC, has announced plans to partner with the National Insurance Commission, NICOM, to de-risk certain commodity assets and attract more investors into the space. Beside, the Commission has also inaugurated a technical committee comprising representatives of the Commission Standard Organization of Nigeria, AFEX, Lagos Commodities and Futures Exchange, a Nigerian community exchange to deliver agro-based standards within three months. Director General Sek Lamido Yuguda said, the risking and ensuring this community asset will attract massive investment in the areas where Nigeria has a comparative advantage. And now it's time for African business news. The Ghanaian government has announced that it will dedicate a minimum of 1% of the country's gross domestic product to supporting research, science, technology and innovative activities. According to Dr. Eric Nkasa, Technical Advisory and Director in Charge of Tertiary Education at the Ministry of Education, the fund bill has been passed and the government is working on the regulatory framework for operationalizing the fund. Dr. Nkasa reaffirmed the government's honor law commitment towards promoting and advancing the study of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics from the basic schools to the tertiary level. The two week workshop organized uh, at the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences, Ghana, aimed at equipping participants with relevant skills on stochastic analysis the analysis of partial differential equations and related numerical method that can be employed. And in the meantime, trade union solidarity has slammed the government of South Africa for pushing high levels of tax in the country, including the high tax rate it continues to levy on fuel and the latest green paper for the Department of Social Development proposing even more taxes. The union said that workers in South Africa are overtaxed and are tired of paying more taxes for fewer and fewer services. Citing the consumer price index figures published by Statistics South Africa on 18 August, the union highlighted the food and fuel inflation is higher than the headline consumer price index rate of 4.6%, especially with the fuel becoming alarming more expensive with a rate of 15.2%. The South African government had proposed a 10% tax hike in the national health insurance and 12% of income being fed into a state-run pension fund. 
and it's time to cross over to outside Nigeria now. Asian stocks fell to the lowest this year as crude oil sank and the dollar rallied on a weakening global growth outlook and the prospect of uh, reduced uh, Federal Reserve stimulus. Now, the gauge for Asia Pacific shares fell more than 1% with Hong Kong equities leading the slide as Chinese technology stocks struggled, including a plunge in Alibaba Group Holding Limited to a record low. A U.S. and European futures edged down after S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 retreated overnight. Stocks are under pressure after the latest minutes show more federal officials agreed they could start slowing the pace of bond purchases later this year, given the progress made toward inflation and unemployment goals. Toyota is to slash worldwide uh, vehicle production by 40% in September because of the global microchip shortage. The world's biggest car maker had planned to make almost 900,000 cars next month, but has now reduced that to around 540,000 vehicles. Volkswagen, uh, the world's second biggest car producer, has won. It may also be forced to cut output further. The COVID-19 pandemic boosted demand for appliances that use chips such as phones, TVs and games consoles. And to oil market now, oil prices fell for a sixth day, the longest losing streak since February 2020, as a spike in COVID-19 cases worldwide few fears over slower fuel demand. Brent crude was down 80 cent, uh, 87 cent rather, that's about 1.30% and $67.36 a barrel after torching the lower since May. Uh, $67.10 earlier in trading session. U.S. West Intermediate crude at East WTI fell $1.05 or about 1.6% to $64.41 a barrel after falling to as low as $64.24, the lowest since the month of May. Well, and that's all we have time for business in at this time. Many thanks for watching. I am Franco Malape. He's back to you now, Margaret. Thank you, Frank. Up next is business, sports business with Jude Chidiese. Welcome to the sports business update. I am Jideichi Chid Ezie. Now, Migu, the streaming subsidiary of China Mobile Telecommunications Company, has secured a live broadcast right to the English Soccer's Premier League through a four year sub licensing deal with IKEA Sports. In addition to live coverage, Migu would provide match previews and post match analysis for. Premier League matches until the close of the 2024-2025 season, while also working with Top Flight Soccer League on marketing and content initiatives. Last month's streaming platform iKeyi purchased Chinese media rights to English Soccer's Top Flight until the end of the 2024-2025 season. The partnership came after the collapse of the previous deal with PP Sports, which was cancelled after the Sonin owned platform failed to complete its payments. And in other stories, world heavyweight boxing champion Anthony Joshua and his athletes management company 258 Management have launched a new cycling agency. 258 Prodige will work across all aspects of the sport, including talent representation, contract negotiation, sponsor negotiations, and corporate events. The ad agency was founded and will be headed by Jamie Balu who has worked extensively in the sport and with leading riders as an international cycling union accredited agent. The unveiling of the 258 Protege has also seen the agency announce signings of a plethora of young riders such as Fisher Black, Sarah Gigante, Nat Fisher Black, Leo Heta, and Nicholas Dlamini. And that's all for now on the sports business update. It's back to you in the studios, Margaret.
Thank you, Judechi. Coming up now is entertainment business. Now in entertainment business, former Netflix staffers charged for making three million US dollars from insider trading. The Wall Street watchdog has charged three former Netflix software engineers over an alleged insider trading ring that made three million US dollars. And ex, the ex-staff members and two close associates were named in court papers. The U.S. Security and Exchange Commission (SEC) said confidential Netflix subscriber growth data was used in the scheme. The information was allegedly used to trade the streaming giant's shares ahead of its earning report. The SEC alleged that Sung Mo Jun, a former software engineer at Netflix, was at the center of long-running scheme to illegally trade shares using insider information about the company's subscriber growth. According to the complainant, while working for Netflix in 2016 and 2017, he repeatedly passed non-public information to his brother and a close friend will both use it to trade ahead of multiple Netflix earnings announcements. Meanwhile, actor and singer Park Yuchun has been accused of violating terms of his contract with his current label besides also spending its $5,459,000 on at an adult entertainment business. His label, Ria Cielo, said in a statement, claimed Park Yuchun violated contract terms by signing a draw contract with a Japanese agency. Besides alleging damages because of Yuchun's actions, the company also claimed that they were helping the actor and singer settle personal debts running into millions. According to the report, Yuchun is also accused of using the company's credit card to purchase luxury gifts and even spent 100 million over an adult entertainment business. And on that note, we wrap up news now. For more stories, visit our website and follow all of our social media handles. My name is Margaret Opera.